Hey guys, what's going on? So today I'm here with the aftermath of the 1995 Buick Regal after San Filippo Smash 6. And guys, this thing, uh, this thing's done. I can tell you that, unfortunately, and it hurts to say it, but this thing's done and I'll show you guys why it's done and uh, why it doesn't make sense to fix it. And uh, so I just wanted to get off the bat, that off the bat, and also I wanted to get this off the bat. Um, guys, I didn't have any recording of this derby. Um, unfortunately, like I said in the Derby Day video, I got no, I had nobody to uh, do grandstands footage. And unfortunately, for some reason, for whatever reason, I've had problems with this GoPro. It did not record my heat, even though I'm pretty darn sure I turned it on. So, I know it was on, it's just that the, for some reason, I hit the record button, it never recorded, so... Don't know what to tell you guys. I've had nothing but problems with that GoPro. Uh, for some reason, it just quits recording randomly, uh, it, and then it starts recording again instantly again. Uh, so it's cut in two different videos, so it makes it harder to edit. And then I have to uh, lower the quality of the video because of it, because every time you edit a video, the quality goes down slightly. So unfortunately, uh, that GoPro is just. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to replace it after this run. It's just I'm getting sick of that GoPro. So anyway, guys, I kind of got saved though, because one we had lots of grandstands footage for all from all for him racing, from track shot live. But not only that, I had somebody come up to me, uh, and his YouTube's D Kettlewood, uh, and he offered me. He said, "Hey, do you want four GoPros in your car?" And I'm like. Well, the more the merrier, honestly. I said, sure, why not? And that kind of saved my butt. So we had four GoPros in the car, two facing the front, two facing the back, inside the car and up near my roof sign. And those will be on YouTube pro probably by the time this video goes up. And I'll put a link in the description and in the comment section to his channel so you guys can go watch it. I may even ask him for the video and I'll give him to the uh, credit for, for all of it, but uh, I may even try to post that on my channel we'll see what happens um but yeah I, i'm gonna also put all for him racing uh description down below and also track shot live just so you guys can see a lot of different angles uh and anybody else who i find who recorded uh, i'll put in the description and the comments below just to see uh all to sorts of different angles of my run here with this car so yeah, this car's actually not really in that bad shape at all compared to what it was after the county fair. Honestly, guys, it's not in really any worse shape, really, for the most part. The back end's a little bit more in than what it was before on both sides now. And uh, took a driver's door shot. And the front frame rails are still completely straight. I only buckled that one just a tiny bit more. Nothing to worry about. And the bumper's still straight. The core support's a little bit messed up here. And the hood, well, it speaks for itself. Uh, but, guys, I I was a punching bag right off the bat here with this car. Um, as soon as I lined up in the middle, because I ended up being in the middle of the pack when we, when we started the derby, and I, I just knew that wasn't going to be good. If I couldn't get to a corner, then I was going to be a punching bag. And sure enough, when I, every time I tried to get to a corner... Uh, I knew that that was pretty much uh, the end of my tires, and sure enough, 30 seconds in, I lost the passenger side tire, and somewhere down the line, I lost this tire as well. And I also lost both donuts in the back. But somehow, this car just kept on moving, and it was actually moving quite well, to be fair, to this car. Uh, it was pretty muddy, but I gotta tell you, this thing just kept on moving. I don't know whether it has to do with these aluminum rims and those tires, but guys, it just kept on moving pretty good. Actually, I think I had better traction in, even with these two flat tires than what I did in uh, what I did in the county fair. Honestly, I really think it might have been better. Um, but guys, I got to show you what took me out, and it's really unfortunate. But it is what it is. Um, actually, if this thing had a different motor in it, like the 3100. This wouldn't have happened, um, but it, because it has a 3100 or 3800 Series 1, it happened. 
but I'll zoom up in here. You guys can see it coming in frame there. Hopefully my camera focuses. You guys can see that crack right in the middle of your screen, can't you? So you guys can see right there, where it's all oily right there, that's a motor mount. Actually, a transmission mount, I should say. And right there's the differential part of my transmission. It comes off the side of the transmission. I'll try to get in there for you. And sure enough, this motor put a little bit too much torque on that mount. And unfortunately, it just cracked that differential housing and it poured all my transmission fluid out. And that was the end of it. Couldn't move anymore. And I knew I hadn't lost an axle. I pretty much knew right off the bat either my loop line got hit or something happened with the transmission over here and sure enough I got out of the car and sitting right here right over here was a bunch of transmission fluid just a bunch of transmission fluid and I'm like I know exactly what happened and because I've heard of this happening with other W bodies of this generation cracks the diff or cracks the differential housing and all your transmission fluid goes running out and that's it and I knew I'd lost my transmission because uh, my speedometer, when you lose an axle, your speedometer will go to like 80 miles per hour, just basically uh, giving a little gas, and that's not what happened here. But let me show you guys underneath the hood, uh, see what happened under there. And honestly, guys, it's really not much at all. Nothing really happened under here. Um, this hood is really messed up, I, have to, I must admit. A lot of people are probably going to say, hey, that differential housing is, you can actually unbolt that and take it back off and then put another one back on, and yes, you can. And it actually doesn't look terrible to do, but guys, this is the end of the season, so I'd have to keep this thing more than likely over the winter. And the back end's really pushed in, and this is a pretty rusty car already to begin with. Guys, it's just not worth it. There's a lot of good parts on this thing still um, that I can rob off of it. Even the subframe straight. So even if I want to keep the subframe, I can keep the subframe. I may or may not do so. It just all depends on time and if I can get this engine and transmission hoisted up in the air far enough to drop it um, as a complete unit. But uh, you guys can see here. The radiator's pushed in a little bit, but it's not bad. It's not bent, I don't think, really at all. Um, it's still holding fluid pretty nicely, actually. My radiator fan does, in fact, still work. And uh, nothing's really been touched under here. I really thought with the way that hood was bending that it was going to touch and rip some of these wires on the top here, including, like, my battery cables, my fuse box I thought was going to get hit. This cable right here, this one right here. You know, that's alternator um, cabling. So that wasn't good, but, and it almost took out my vacuum hose right there to the brake booster. That would have been bad because uh, that would have really hurt the way this car ran. But fortunately, it didn't touch any of that. I mean, it didn't, it doesn't even look like it hit any of it. And uh, so. Let me go ahead and start this thing up for you guys. Still runs great. I never even got it up to operating temperature. Um, unfortunately, it just didn't last long enough. I ended up like taking seventh or eighth in it. Go ahead and start it up for you guys. There we go. Didn't even really show you guys the back end here too much more than what I already did. I'll show you guys more as the uh, days go along here, but it's uh, it's pretty bad. Um, this floor is starting to buckle here. That area where it was buckled before is starting to get worse, obviously. Uh, but I took some very hard hits to this back end. It just didn't move much. And I'm very, very impressed with this back end, even though it was so rusty. We'll go ahead and open this door here because like I said this is a bone stock derby so I only had to change shut 
I was actually able to open it very easily. Floor is buckled right there. I'm not sure if that was from the derby or something. Like I jacked it up. No, I couldn't have jacked it up right there. Either way, that floor is a little bit buckled there. Um, this whole entire thing started coming in on this side as well. Uh, obviously, that crease is not there from the factory there. Um, creasing or breaking all the seals through there, just like the other side did, starting to collapse through here. Um, pretty sure that's a straight. That was supposed to be straight from the factory, and this is all starting to bow out through here. So she was definitely giving out on me on this side as well, but uh, obviously not too bad because the door is still able to shut um, and open. So obviously it couldn't have been too bad as far as this area goes. Uh, so it wasn't too, too bad yet. I still had maybe one or two more hits on this back end before it was really going to start to get bad. Um, at least on this side. That side already is pretty pretty well and done. I don't know if I would have wanted to take many more shots of that back end with especially how close it is to that gas tank cover, although the gas tank is another inch or so beyond that anyway. So even then, um, I think it would have been fine. It's a very heavy gauge gas tank as well. So it's not like it's any thin gas tank. Um, so that pretty much marks the end for the 1995 Buick Regal, guys. Uh, the end of an era. Uh, didn't do super great for me, uh, but the only reason it didn't do super great for me in the first derby is because I got stuck. I think I could have, if I didn't get stuck, it would have been a very different outcome, I think, because like in that, like in this last derby, I hadn't even uh, got up to really hot temperatures at all. Uh, I wasn't even up to operating temperature in the second derby. So, um, that's pretty much it for the Regal guys. So hopefully we'll be able to find something a little bit different to Derby next time. You know, if I see Illumina cheap though, it is what it is. Or a Regal like this one or something like that. But I'm going to try to stay away from the W bodies for maybe one or two runs. Um, or at least get two cars next year, one being not a W body. Uh, maybe a Sabre. Uh, maybe I'll try something like a... Uh, Sonata, I don't know. Uh, you guys comment down below what you guys want to see. Like I said before, I'm always open to comments and just say what you think you would like to see ran on my channel. Um, I know that this has been a pretty recurring thing that I just keep on buying W bodies, even though you guys are like, hey, why don't you derby something else? Um, but it's because I got all the parts to these and it's just easier to build them when you already got all the parts and with us building cars outside, you want that extra time of already having the parts to put these things together and already know how it works and stuff like that. This was just a little bit different of an animal, unfortunately. That could have been prevented what happened to that motor mount down there, but unfortunately I just didn't think about it. And, uh, and this isn't a mod class, so I couldn't change out these motor mounts for like solid or, uh, or just chains around and, and stuff like that. Couldn't really do much as far as that goes, but at the same time, that could have been prevented. I think, I, th I believe I could have done something about that, but it is what it is at this point, guys. Uh, this thing would have needed a decent amount of work just to be put back in the ring just for another run where I just tried to junk it. So it's junked, and that's what I'm happy about. We'll be able to fill this thing with scrap and finally get this Buick Regal out of here and move on to maybe a nice, maybe cleaner car than what this is. So, although I must admit, this was one tough SOB. So, up front, so. Just got to put that out there. Alrighty, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye, everybody.